welcome to another edition of Red Card Headbutt Wrestling. We're coming to you live from the Bull Weevil Family Reunion for today's broadcast. Walking to the ring at this time, desperately trying to dodge the massive piles of animal feces left by the various pets that the family has brought with them is the Dixieland Destroyer. Now we caught up before the contest with the Dixieland Destroyer and did some bargaining that involved a large bucket of chicken and about six gallons of gravy. We were able to get you a rare pre-match interview with the Destroyer himself. Let's listen into these rare pre-match comments from the Dixieland Destroyer. comments from the Dixieland Destroyer. It seems to me that the mask is more of a matter of public courtesy than keeping any kind of mystique. As the Dixieland Destroyer makes his way into the ring, one has to wonder just who in the hell set this thing up. I know that sometimes on Red Card Heaven we're not presented with the greatest of facilities, but Jesus H. Christ, it looks like they bought that damn thing at a flea market. As you can see, it's falling apart like an old couch and appears to be held together by sunshine and wishes. We await the rival of his opponent as the entrance music is being played on a tape deck that one of the members bought at a world famous flea market on the way over here. That's right, folks. I said tape deck. Take a good goddamn look at the crowd and tell me if any of them looks like they've even seen an MB3 player, let alone held or own one. Coming out of this time is Coach Havens, and one has to wonder what in the hell he was thinking in signing for this contest. The Dixieland Destroyer is well over the 400 pound mark. Not counting the enormous pile of baked beans and ham hocks, he wolfed down to the picnic tables opposite the camera before the contest. Coach Havens taking his sweet time getting to the ring as he probably hasn't had a tetanus shot in a while and doesn't want him to risk getting any communicable diseases by getting into the ring against a Dixieland Destroyer. I mean, I don't mean to go on forever about the state of that ring, but that damn thing looks like a third grader science project. And for the love of God, Frank, will you please tell that asshole intern of yours to quit walking in front of the camera? Dozens of people are watching this on Channel 72, and the last thing I think any of them need or want to see is that guy's oil-changing shirt. Both men are now in the ring, and the referee is beginning to give the pre-match instructions. The bulk of which is probably including the phrases, keep this bullshit short, bring it home early, and please, for the love of God, they're about to steal my car, keep this bullshit short. The dozens in attendance at the Bull Weevil family reunion are about as excited as they can be for this as some of the younger fans are upset that they have delayed the start of the sack races for this match to take place. I suppose that's just the way things go when the weird uncle owns a wrestling promotion. Strikes first with a forearm shot that doesn't even phase the Dixieland Destroyer. The coach is definitely going to have to use every bit of his speed to get the big man off his feet. He takes, oh my god, and gets hit with a ham hock of a clothesline by the Dixieland Destroyer. I'm not liking the coach's chances in this one, folks. During the more coherent parts of his pre-match interview, the Destroyer mumbled something about choke slamming him through the ring. Now that I think about it, both competitors are going to have to drastically change their plans of attack. Destroyer throwing his weight around as well as the coaches as he continues to test out the structural integrity of the ring. You have to think that co the coach will hold up to a better pounding than that son of a bitch. The last time I saw a ring that awful looking Greg Valentine was wrestling in some drunk guy's backyard. We get a cover by the Destroyer as the match unmercifully continues. Folks, the tape machines are rolling. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Al E. Gators. It's a snap and good place to be for folks from 3 to 93 with delicious dinners like seafood and prime rib specialty seven days a week with a DJ and a big floor for dancing seven nights a week with a bar full of great drinks and an upbeat atmosphere that makes every day feel like a celebration. Bring the whole gang. We've even got banquet facilities available. Any way you want it, Al E. Gators is a great place to celebrate. Al E. Gators snap and place. Half mile east of Brumar Hospital on Lancaster Avenue in Haverford. Right in the of Folks, we are back, and Coach Havens appears to have the upper hand and appears to be going up to the top for his men's men finishing move, the Coach Class Flight. If he hits this, it will be all over, and the Dixieland Destroyer is undefeated. She will over as well. The Coach has hit the Coach Class Flight. He makes the cover, and he gets the one. Two, three, my God, folks, the Dixieland Destroyer has been defeated. The most momentous occasion in the history of this program. God, that's sad. 
that wrap things up this week, folks. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.